So right-wing commentators Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens are losing their minds right now over a supposed attack, a conspiracy against Western men and Western masculinity. And the latest tipping point in this crisis, and get ready, because this is stupid, it really is, is that Harry Styles, you know, pop singer Harry Styles, wore some dresses in Vogue magazine. Now, Vogue tweeted the following out a couple days ago, quoting Harry Styles saying, there's so much joy to be had in playing with clothes. I've never thought too much about what it means. It just becomes this extended part of creating something. And Candace Owens could not take that. She could not take that narrative, nor the pictures of this man wearing clothes that might be typically understood as feminine or something a woman would wear. And so she put out this idea that this is really a fundamental attack against men and masculinity, saying, there is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this in the West. The steady feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It is an outright attack. Bring back manly men. And of course, she faced a lot of pushback, rightfully so, for this ridiculous take, not only in its essence, but also in it being so over the top. But her fellow right-wing commentator, Ben Shapiro, basically agreed with her, saying the following, This is perfectly obvious. Anyone who pretends this is not a referendum on masculinity for men to don floofy dresses is treating you as a full-on idiot. These people are the idiots, though, guys. They are the idiots. Because we have to understand that if your conception of masculinity is so weak, if it's so based on what a few scraps of clothing represent, it is actually not a strong concept, certainly not strong enough to build an entire pillar of civilization upon. If your idea is that Western civilization, whatever the heck that means in 2020, requires strong men and a confident, concrete idea of what masculinity is, and one man or a few men who wear dresses or maybe dress a little bit feminine or maybe put on some makeup or some nail polish utterly shatters your idea of masculinity, then it was never good enough to base a society upon, ever. From my perspective, as somebody who is a man and generally doesn't dress very feminine, I can say that this does not threaten my conception of masculinity. In no way does it make me feel like masculinity is under assault. In no way does it make me feel that masculinity is being weakened. In no way does it make me feel that my son, who is, you know, now almost two years old, will grow up in a world where it'll be bad for him to be masculine. Not at all. What this does show me, more than anything, is positive masculinity from Harry Styles. When I think of what it means to be a healthy man, there's a confidence there, an ability to say, I am who I am, take me as I am, and the world needs to accept me. And I think there's something powerful about a reasonable confidence. And when you talk about a positive masculinity, it's saying that it doesn't matter whether I dress like a man or a woman or as neither. I am who I am and you can live with it. That's strong, confident masculinity. And if that means that you wear a three-piece suit or you wear a jeans and t-shirt or you wear a dress or you wear a blouse or you wear pink or you put on some nail polish or a little bit of makeup, none of those things invalidate your idea of masculinity. The real weakness here is are people that are so rigidly defined by these idealized conceptions of gender that go back 50, 100, 200 years in some cases that they can't shift a little bit, that rigidity will be the end of a society. Because what defines a strong civilization is adaptability above all. That's what, if you believe in Western civilization, that's what's made the West, if, insofar as the West has been successful, more successful than other cultures because supposedly it's been more adaptable. It's moved with the times. It's been less wedded in some cases to certain traditions. And maybe one of those traditions that needs to be, you know, imbued with a bit of flexibility is gender presentation. So I have no time for this fear mongering. I think it's a good thing that my son can grow up in a world 
where his idea of masculinity is a lot more open than it was when I was growing up and especially when my father was growing up. We are going to have a society of stronger men, not weaker men, because of that. 